person for what they do for us versus who they are, having nothing to do with us. And worse than that, we love ourselves for what we do for us. In other words, when we're good, we love ourselves. And when we're bad, we don't love ourselves. True or true? Okay? And that's the biggest problem we have with most people today. And let me say this again, that at the three-day million on my intensive, and I know a lot of you have been there, one of, the, one of the blessings we have is this ability to be able to disconnect those two so that you, you truly love another person for who they are, which means you can truly love yourself for who you are and accept yourself the way you are right this moment. Good or good? good. And that's another blessing that we have. And so, as I said, there's no such thing as a really rich victim. So in order to stay a victim and get their attention, these people make darn sure they never get what? Rich. So here's a choice. You have a choice. You can be a victim or you can be rich, but you can't be both. You have to choose. And let me say this right now, and I hate to be so graphic about it, but we came here to learn, yes? yes. All right. So everybody go like this with your finger. Put it over here. Watch. Every time you blame or justify or complain, you are slitting your financial throat and your happiness throat as well. And people, well, if they want to be around you, there's something wrong with them too. So it's time to acknowledge the fact that you create everything that's in your life, you create everything that's not in your life, and everything in between. You create your wealth, you create your non-wealth, you created your exact financial situation that you're in right now. Now that's a good thing to know, isn't it? Because if you create it, you can discreate it. And you can create something else, yes? All right, please stand up for the declaration. Put your hand on your heart. I create the exact level of my financial success. Again. One more time, twice as loud. Turn to somebody, look them in the eye, give them a high five and say, you have a millionaire mind. And have a seat. Good job. All right. Here's another one. This is very important. Now, what do we do when something's very important that's coming up? We do a drum roll. Ready? Let's hear it. Let me hear it. Good job. Rich people play the money game to what? Win. And most poor and old class people play what? Not, not to lose. Not to lose. Oh my goodness. Most people actually play the money game on defense versus offense. Let me ask you your, your, your opinion here again. In sports or any game, any game you play strictly on defense, tell me, what are your chances of actually winning that game? How many people say pretty slim and none? And what are your chances of winning the game big? impossible true and that's the way most people play the money game on defense versus offense you know their primary concern for a lot of people is survival and security you know as so what is your goal what's your objective what's your true intention for a lot of people their primary intention is to have enough to pay the bills I just want enough to pay the bills on time would be a miracle or, I just want to get by. Or, look, I just want to earn a decent living. And due to the power of intention, that's exactly what you're going to get and not a dime more. Some people know this quite well, yes? Or, you have middle class people, and middle class people, what's their big intention? They just want to be what? Comfortable. You know, it's so important to them, we're going to write it two times. So, there's comfortable, and then there's this word. What's this word? And we all know comfortable leads to rich, yes? Yes? No, and that's not my experience. Let me say this right now, just for the record, in my experience. Comfortable and rich are planets apart. Planets apart. What you need to do and who you have to be 
to be comfortable is a whole different world than who you have to be and what you have to do to get rich. Is that clear at all? Yes. Is that really clear? Yes. I hope you get it. Because I would say that's one of the number one issues with most people sitting in the room right now. Your goal is to be comfortable. Let me say this right now. If your goal is to be comfortable, you will never get rich. Never. On the other hand, if your goal is to get rich, you're going to end up mighty comfortable. <laughs> so here's the thought. If you shoot for the stars, you're at least going to hit the moon. Most people only shoot for the ceiling in their house and they wonder what the problem is. All right, here's what I want you to do. Another action. Are you willing to take the actions? All right, practice. Practice makes it permanent. So tonight when you get home, tomorrow morning, I want you either yourself or with your team to create a strategy. Create a what? To help 10 times the number of people you're helping right now. Whatever business you're in, whatever job situation you're in, I want you to help 10 times as many people. Who can tell me why? Exactly, because that's how you get paid. One of the things we do in our programs is we have a certain definitions. And the definition we use of, of a business person or even in a job is, listen closely, a person who solves problems for people at a profit or for pay. Say that with me. A person who solves problems for people for profit or for pay. Good or good? Yeah. So what's your job? This is what? Solve problems. And you get paid accordingly. Meaning that if you go out there to make money, what do you do? But if you go out there to solve problems, and if you go out there to solve 10 times the problems you're solving now, there's a good chance you can get how much more money? 10 times. Does that make sense? Because that's what delivering value is all about. It's about solving. Let me put it this way. If you're not solving a problem, I guarantee you're not getting paid. People say, well, Harv, how do I make more money? Wrong question. The better question is, how do I help more people? How do I help 10 times the people? And that's going to take a little strategy. And for a lot of you, it's going to take a little more leverage, a little more systemizing. A little more being based on results versus time. Does that make any sense? Yes, yes or yes? yes? All right, good job. So, please stand up for the declaration. Good exercise, yes. <laughs> Hands on your heart. My goal is to become a multimillionaire and more. Let me hear you. Again. Again. And nothing less will do. Give me a high five and say, You have a millionaire mind. <laughs> Question. In the last one, why did I ask you to add on and nothing less will do? Listen closely. This could be the most important words you hear, hear all night. Are you ready? Yeah. What you settle for is what you get. Let me say it again. What you settle for is what you get. If you look at your life right now, the results of your life is exactly what you've settled for. You understand what I'm saying? People walk into a job situation or a business, they walk into a job and, they get, and they're in a job interview and the, and the um, interviewer says, well, what's your salary expectations? And they, um, they go, uh, quarter million a year? And the guy goes, what? <laughs> this job pays $30,000. <laughs> really? So find me another job. It pays me a quarter million dollars. See, if, if you are only willing to do what it takes to earn a quarter million dollars a year, that's all you'll accept. And you will keep on hunting and searching and creating the strategy until you get there. But if you are willing to take $30,000 and be comfortable and get by, that's it. You're done. Does that make any sense at all? Yes. What you settle for is what you get. Say, what I settle for is what I get. 
Tell somebody else, please. Good job. All right, let's go to the next one here. This one here is, is, is a simple one and really short. Listen closely. Rich people always think the word what? Both. And most everybody else thinks what? Either or. Either or. As in, either I can be rich or I can be spiritual. Either I can be rich or I can be good and kind. Either I can be rich or I can be generous. Either I can be rich or I can have my health. Either I can be rich or I can have time for my family. Either I can, be, either I can have money or I can have love. Either or, either or. All that is called scarcity thinking. What kind of thinking? Scarcity, scarcity thinking. And the answer to all of those is what? Both. Both. Listen. Listen. You're smart enough. You're intelligent enough. And you are creative enough to create a strategy that works for you in your life. And if it's not working on day one, you readjust it until it's working on day two. The answer is what? Both. What is it? Both. Both. Absolutely. You can be kind and generous and loving and spiritual and compassionate and really, really rich. Good or good? Let me ask you a question. How many of you ever heard the saying, you can't have your cake and eat it too? <laughs> this is for my money. That is the absolute stupidest saying I've ever heard in my whole life. The all-time dumbest, the hall of shame, all right? You know, in, in my book, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, I talk about this a little bit. And we, we give a lot of what's called wealth principles in the book. I want to read you this one. Rich people believe you can have your cake and eat it too. Middle class people believe cake is too rich, so only have a little piece. <laughs> Poor people don't believe they deserve cake, so they order a donut, focus on the whole, and wonder why they have nothing. <laughs> Stand up for the declaration, please. It goes like this. I can be kind, generous, and loving, and still be really, really rich. Again, I can be kind, generous, and loving, and still be really, really rich. One more time. I can be kind, generous, and loving, and still be really, really rich. Just a high five and say, you have a billionaire mind. All right, good job, guys. Excellent work. This one here is such a an insidious one. It's like something in the back of most people's mind, but they never will say it out loud. And it's, it's one of the biggest blockers of all the blockages of wealth. Are you ready? Yeah. Rich and successful people admire and model. What's the two words? Admire. admire. Other rich and successful people. And what do most everybody else do? They resent the heck out of them, yes or yes. Most poor and middle class people often look at other people's success with resentment or jealousy or envy, or they snip, they're so lucky, or they whisper naughty things under their breath. You have to realize something so simple, that if you view rich people as bad in any way, shape, or form, and you want to be a good person, then you can never be rich. You can never be rich. You can never be rich. So you have to practice. Say, I have to practice. So instead of resenting rich people, I want you to practice admiring rich people. I want you to practice blessing rich people. I want you to practice loving rich people. That way you unconsciously know that when you get rich, other people will what? They'll admire and bless and love you instead of resent the heck out of you. Much better for creating wealth. Yes or yes? yes. You know, I want to share with you a philosophy that completely transformed my life. Are you willing to hear it? It's from the Huna philosophy. Where does Huna come from? Hawaii. Hawaii, thank you. And it simply says this. Bless that which you want. Say it with me. Bless that which you want. Bless that which you want. So what that means is this. If you see somebody with 
a beautiful home, bless that home and bless that person. If you see somebody with a beautiful car, bless that car and bless that person. If you see somebody with a beautiful family, bless that family and bless that person. If you see somebody with, with, with a, a, a beautiful, wonderful business, bless that business, bless that person. Why? Because anything that you negate, you can never have. Never. Does that make any sense? And you've got to watch it. It's so quick, isn't it? It's so quick to do a little tinge of resentment, to negate them. And meanwhile, you know you can't have it after that. So I have a little practice for you on this one. Next time you see somebody coming out of a limousine, I mean, someone who's got some money, obviously, not some party kid with 48 people in the limo. <laughs> Prom night! No, no uh, you know what I'm talking about. I want you to walk over to that person coming out of that limousine. I want you to shake their hand. And I want you to say, thank you. Thank you for being an excellent role model for me for me creating success. Thank you for being such an excellent role model for success. Are you willing? All right, please stand up for the declaration. Hands on your heart. I admire rich people. I bless rich people. I love rich people. I study rich people. And I'm going to be one of those rich people too. Turn to somebody, give them a high five, and say, You have a billionaire mind. You know, we're talking a lot. We're talking a lot about rich people, getting rich, being rich. And some people come up to me all the time, they go, Harv, what's with the rich thing? Like, why, why, you know, are you so into that? And I said, look, you know, I've been called a financial evangelist. <laughs> and I take that as a compliment. Why? Because someone's got to be a proponent for it. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Amen, right. So, but let's talk about it because it's, it's more than just money. So let's talk about why be rich. Number one. Lifestyle. What's the word? Lifestyle. Hey, obviously that's the most obvious one for the wonderful lifestyle that can afford you and your family. It's a nice way to live, yes or yes. yes. But number two is contribution. What is it? Contribution. Here's my thought. It says this. My feeling is this, that if you have the wherewithal to be rich, it's your duty, it's your obligation to do so. Why? So that you can help people who simply do not have that wherewithal. Does that make sense to you all? Because, and I'll say this, that if you're in this room, you probably have the wherewithal. Especially you self-selected yourself to be here. If you're hearing this message, you selected yourself to be that. You understand? And I, I, here's where I came up with that, like very specifically, a good example. Um, a while ago, I was reading in the, in the newspaper about a woman in Africa Tanzania to be exact, and uh, she has a goiter problem. Do you all know what a goiter problem is? It's like when they have the big, thick neck, right? And it's a thyroid problem. And you know that that problem can be uh, completely alleviated with a 10-minute surgery, 10-minute operation, and it's gone. In Tanzania, they have a decent medical system, but it's a pay-for-play deal. In other words, you pay for your, for your, um, for your, uh, for, for, you pay for your doctor or your, or your hospitalization or whatever. This woman with this goiter problem has, and it cost, by the way, cost $31, $31 for this 10-minute operation. She has been saving for just over five years. Five years, and she has $22. Twice a week, she doesn't eat. She has a newborn child who's going to be another mouth to feed, so she's feeling that it's going to take her another five years to get the other $9. So you would think, for goodness sake, someone just send her the stupid nine bucks. Problem. There are millions, what's the word? Millions. Of people in this situation. Millions. Not one, not two, not ten, not ten thousand, and not hundreds of thousands. Millions in this situation. So how can you help them better? by being broke, 
or being rich enough to be able to do something about it. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I get this all the time. I get people saying, well, you know, what about the environment? What about this? And what about their, they're taking all the oil and they're killing all the forests and all that. They, they, they. Yes, some of them are. You want to save the environment? Get rich, buy a few million acres and save it. You're going to have some power and control over your land. You understand what I'm saying? Yes or no? Yes. Take responsibility is what I want to say on that. Okay, this one over here, one more here. This is critical. The third reason is for what? Who you have to become in order to create wealth. In other words, who do you have to be in character, in virtue, in, in, in traits? How big do you have to be to get rich versus you know, being broke. And you, again, you, you, there are certain characteristics that it takes to be incredibly successful. Because what, again, what causes, what creates success? And isn't it one of the things being one of the best in your field? Yes or no? Yes, yes or no? Yes. Absolutely. Who do you have to be? What do you have to know? Who do you have to be in character to be the best at what you do in order to get paid the most? Does that make sense to you? So who do you have to become? It's a learning process. And that brings us to the next way that rich people actually think quite differently and are quite different than most other. Rich people are what? Bigger than their problems. What is it? Bigger than their problems. And most other people are what? Smaller than their problems. Smaller. And the secret... Guys, I want you to hear something right now. If you will just understand and take action on this one right here, I promise you, mano a mano, heart to heart, your life will just skyrocket. It will go to a whole other level, and you'll see why in a moment. Are you ready? Yes. Listen closely. The secret to success, my friends, is not to try and avoid or get rid of your problems. The secret to success is to grow yourself so you are bigger than any problem. So we got the size of you, and we got the size of your problem, and let's do a little scale here. So here we are. Here's you and here's your problem. And we are dealing with, say, a level five problem. But you happen to be a level two person. Question, is that a big problem or a little problem? That's a big problem, right? But let's say you grow yourself to, say, be a level eight person. Same problem. Big problem, little problem. Little problem. Now let's say you work with us and you grow yourself to be, say, a level ten person. Big problem, little problem. No problem. It doesn't even exist in the realm of your mind as a problem. You don't see it as a problem. It's just something to take care of, yes or no? Yes. Let's test this out. How many of you have ever been in a conversation with somebody who's, who's talking about their problem and you're going, you're going to them and you go, I don't see the problem here. Raise your hand if you ever had that happen. Everyone's had that happen. Everyone. Because at that point in time, they are smaller than their problem. So it's not about the size of the problem, it's about the size of you. There's always going to be problems, yes or yes. There's so many times in this business, and I'm sure in your business, but when you get to a higher and higher level, you know, the responsibilities become greater, you're, you're the, the, the amount of money invested becomes more, you have, you know, we have 140 employees, you know, there, there are staff people, there's, you know, huge overheads, and Lots and lots of what? Quote, unquote, problems. And, and my wife says to me all the time, Harv, why did you choose such a hard business? And I go, it's not about the business. It's about me. Because if I can't handle the problems here, you think I can handle the problems there? Because problems are going to be with you all the time. True or true? true? And running away from them, or playing small because you don't want any problems? That's crazy. Let's face it. We're going to have quote-unquote problems. But the size of those quote-unquote problems will depend on the size of us, not the problem. Raise your hand if you've ever felt like, I don't want to like, get into the big leagues because there's like, so many problems there. I just want to have a nice, simple life. Raise your hand. Be honest. Come on. More than half of you in here. How's it working so far? 
You still have the problem, but you're broke. That's the biggest problem of all. Church room. I figure it this way. If I'm going to have problems, I might as well get rich. All right. So I'm going to give you a little anchor. Who knows what an anchor is? An anchor is what? A trigger so you, can, so you can remember something. So here's what I want you to do. From now on, every time you look at something you perceive as a major problem in your life, here's what I want you to do. Are you ready? I want you to do this. Mini me, mini me, mini me, mini me. <laughs> so you can remember, remind yourself that if that's a big problem, you must be very small right now. And you, you better put your attention where it belongs. What? On the problem or on you? Yeah. On you. That's right. On you. And you don't give up and you don't get taken out and you don't bail out and you don't say, well, this is too hard. I, I want to do something different. How many have ever said something like that? How many say something like that almost every day? It's not the size of the problem. Have you heard the saying, fortunately or unfortunately, you take yourself with you wherever you go? <laughs> that's that's what I, my answer is to my wife. How could you choose such a hard business? It's not the business, it's more. True or true? If it's hard, it's because I made it hard. If it's easy, because I make it easy. If it's successful, it's because I made it successful. If it's unsuccessful, it's because I made it unsuccessful. True or true? It doesn't just happen to us. So, the fact is that your wealth can only grow to the extent that you do. So the goal is to grow yourself so you can handle any problems that get in your way of creating wealth, and just as importantly, keeping your wealth once you've got it. And who knew that would be an issue? You know what? This is only reserved for certain people in this room. People who, uh, who have or have had a lot of money and know that it's one complete world to make it. And it's a whole other world to keep it. True or true? That is a whole other world. And again, it's not about the it. It's about you. It's about you. And so, you know, really, you're like a container. Say, I'm a container. I'm a container. And if the container is small, but the money is big, what has to happen? That's right. The money goes. The money goes. Do you all understand that? Let me say this again. If you, the container, is small, but somehow the money is big, what has to happen? It doesn't fit. It has to go somewhere else. True or true? true. So you have to grow yourself so you become a big, big container so you can attract and hold money. And one of the things we do in our, in our programs is we focus on not, only, uh, 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 not only growing yourself as a container, but consistently growing yourself. Because if you, and if you're, if you want your, raise your hand if you want your money to consistently grow. Remember, your money can only grow to the extent that you do. So if you want your money to grow, who has to grow? I do. Now you got it. Now you got it. Now you've got the root. You have to keep up with the money. Let me put it another way. Your money has kept up with you. I'll say it again. Your money has kept up with you. If your money's here, it's because you're here. Does that make any sense? If your money's here, it's because you're here. If you're here and your money's here, it's going to have to meet you. It'll always grow to the extent that you do and always come down to the extent that you are. Raise your hand if you've ever heard stories about people who are doing really well and then they messed up, messed up in their relationships, messed up with, with habits or with drugs or alcohol, and what happened to their money? Always comes down to meet them. No or no? Yes? Your money is at the same level you are, my friends. And that's not a derogatory thing. That's to make sure you start to focus your attention where you need to. Personally, I always looked outside of myself. Once I do this marketing thing, and once I understand this real estate, and once I do this, and once I... <coughs> but it wasn't about any of those things. It was about the size of me. Was I able to attract and hold and grow the money? 
True or true? true? I hope you get it. Now, so, like I said, you must grow yourself to be a big container so you can attract and hold big wealth. And here's the beautiful thing about it. If you are a big container, if you are a big person, but, and your intention is to have wealth, a lot of money, but right now you don't have it, guess what has to happen? What has to happen? The money has to come. Why? Because it's a universal principle. And the, and the universal principle says that the universe abhors a vacuum and will rush in to fill any space that's created for it. And if you're a big container, but you only have a little money right now, the money has to come if that's your intention. True or true? true. You know, it reminds you. Good. That's good news, isn't it? You keep working on you. You're on the right track. You're on the right track here. You know, my favorite plant is, is the Chinese bamboo plant. I'm along with that line. Why? Because this is a very interesting plant in that you plant the seeds and you look after the first year, there's nothing there. And you look in the second year and there's nothing there. And you look in the third year and there's nothing there. You say, forget it. Somehow the seeds didn't take hold. I've got no, no, no tree here. In the fourth year, there's nothing there. But in the fifth year, all of a sudden, you see a little sprout. And then listen to this. In six weeks, how long? Six weeks. That plant can grow to 90 feet. 90 feet in six weeks. How could that be possible? Because what was it doing for five whole years? Growing its roots, like you guys, growing its roots, so that when it does pop, it can withstand that incredible growth. What would happen if it didn't grow those roots so deep and thick? The first big wind that comes, it's gone. How many of you all know people that that's happened to? Because the roots weren't dug deep enough. You understand? Give someone a high five and say, you're on the right track. That's why it's so imperative that you keep learning and growing. Learning and what? Growing. Because listen closely. This is very important. Because if you're not growing, you're automatically what? Dying. I'm going to say it again. If you're not growing, you're what? Dying. If you're not sure that that's a, that's a, a, a scientific fact. As, I'm not a scientist, but ask any scientist, any, any person who's involved in physics, raise your hand if you have a plant or flower at home. If your plant's not...